very warm welcome everyone to the Myanmar Watch on Global Watch. Today is the 3rd of October and it is 6am Jerusalem time and uh, we just um, feel so grateful that Father God is in control. And um, I just had a wonderful verse and now where have I put it? Here it is. And I just feel to read this out <clears throat> because spring has sprung finally in Australia um, and uh, in Isaiah 61 11 the sovereign Lord will show his justice to the nations of the world and we know that means Myanmar as well everyone will praise him his righteousness will be like a garden in early spring with plants springing up everywhere we say amen to that <laughs> So, Roz, um, I'll hand over to you and bless you and Ken with the love and the strength and the health of the Lord in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Thank you, Alison. Blessings to you as well. So welcome, everybody. Um, we have quite a task ahead of us today because this is, this is the beginning of the days of awe. And um, I don't know, but we certainly celebrated last night Yom Teruah with a um, hundred shofar blasts, which was rather powerful time of decrees and, and shofars. But Oran sent me a message to say that he can't, he doesn't think he'd be able to join us. He might try and come on later, but the rain has come back again and the flooding has started again in um, the city that he's in and Maasai and also across the border in Tajilik. Um, so we don't have him with us today. But I've been looking at what Su Susan Rowe wrote about this 10 days of awe sitting in awe looking at him and a few things have really um, stood out to me we we have i have actually sent a report on the situation in myanmar to global watch to the community i'll put it again in in chat for anybody who wants to download it but the situation has become even more dire than it was the last time we were on this call. Um, Cyclone Yagi went through Vietnam. Um, I think something like 20 people died, but maybe a thousand have died in Myanmar as a result of the flooding. Um, and this is on the top of the effects of war in, in the nation and where the flooding occurred was very much areas where there's been a lot of conflict, a lot of bombings. Um, so the people were pretty desperate before, pretty short of food and shelter. And, and then with the flooding, they're short of water. Um, so it's become a fairly difficult situation. And on top of that, Minong Lang, the chief general, increased the age of conscription from 30 to 35, 35 for young men to 65 for all men. And so these people don't want to fight with the junta. It's a death sentence for one thing, but they're against the junta. They don't want the continued military occupation. So people have been fleeing from the major cities into conflict zones, into areas that are very flooded. So you can imagine the sort of chaos that that's occurred in the nation. And in the midst of that, he is Lord, he is God. And the thing that really spoke to me, particularly that Sue Rao wrote, 
was to do with repentance and unbelief. I just feel, you know, when we get faced with an, another update and see the horror of what's happening, people dying, more bombing, a lack of food and shelter and water, schooling not happening, then, then it sort of takes away our, uh, you know, it, it comes as a shock each time it happens. And, and we sort of don't know how to pray. That's unbelief. And um, I've been really encouraged lately. I don't know whether you saw that post um, that somebody put up on, on Global Watch that really, even though Hezbollah, Iran sent all of those rockets over into Israel, the three um, domes, there are three different domes, but it's an incredible miracle that they operated fully, functioned fully, and coordinated in a way that, according to the writer, is not possible, but for God. So we've seen a miracle occur this week. We've seen a miracle occur in Australia when there was a, a big crusade, an awakening crusade in Brisbane. And um, only a third of the people that registered for this gathering turned up and they got rained on very heavily out in the open in this stadium so there was probably only a thousand people all up that attended in the three or four days that it was on but they did get a thousand people giving their lives to the lord and the figures don't add up it's pretty much a miracle as well it is a miracle Certainly, the churches went out into the into the streets, but people did bring people to come and hear the message. So we've been encouraged by the miracles that have been happening in the last few days. We haven't heard anything unless David has a report for us from within Myanmar. But when I read the news coming out of Myanmar, it's all difficult it's all not very nice and um, I'm not going to bore you with all of the things that have been happening um, except maybe to make one comment and that is that China has recently supplied Minonglang with another six aircraft to bomb his own people so another six aircraft have just arrived from China. And quite likely those six aircraft have not been paid for because the economy of Myanmar has, has really crashed. So I don't think they've got the funds to pay for it. So it will be on the tab. And just as with Laos, which is now a state that is pretty much under the power of China, Myanmar, China will be having, has a lot of influence over Myanmar. Another thing that Su Rao said was praying, praying for various groups that are in conflict to be reconciled. And we're aware that even when the junta is defeated soundly there are there are then i don't know david you might be able to correct me but i don't know how many different armies there are in the nation the ethnic armies but they're not uh, reconciled with one another a lot of them are not reconciled with one another one of them recently said they won't work with the national unity government etc. 
So there needs to be a reconciliation with them. And then the Lord really challenged me. Is it possible for Minong Lang, the military, to be reconciled to the ethnic groups? Recently, they did ask for a ceasefire, which the ethnic groups have refused. Straight away, they refused. And what that probably tells us is that what we're looking at, the, the upheaval that's going on at the moment, not just the floods, but the increased bombing, is to do with the fact that the me that the junta are losing ground and this may be their their death throes in the nation. But to see a reconciliation with all of the ethnic groups in Burma would be an incredible miracle. And it's not beyond him. So for those that have just come on, welcome. But Orain's not able to join us today because the flooding has started afresh and, um, and there's more flooding happening. Thank you, Father. So... Um, Christine, did you want to pray? Yes, but I also would like to give a praise report because we have a um, missionary here in our town right now in Hanut. Um, he, li he lived now the last four months in Myanmar and his son is living there with his wife and children since I think now a few years. And he, talked a uh, he told us a lot about his last four months and he said he always prayed as he is um, an evangelist and he is he built up prayer house in India and here in Hanoi he was a long time and now in Greece and now that God called him to Myanmar and he said he, his whole life he prayed for revival that he want, once will see revival and he said now in Myanmar he they experiencing this because they have uh, so many opportunities to share the gospel yeah, also they, they have a house for young people and it's I think it's with YWAM and I don't know what they are all doing, but they say they have always when they, they go they go into the cities and bring support with um, food and things to help the people and then they always do um, evangelistic word and tell about Jesus and he said they never never had any refuse against their preaching but the people come and give their life to Jesus. And he said, it's so amazing. He sometimes cannot believe what he is experiencing. And so he said, in the midst of all these terrible things, the people are ready to receive the gospel. And um, he is really a, a man. He, is a policeman. he was a policeman in his former time. He is, he is not telling lies. Or he, he, is so, he, he cried but when he was sharing with us what is happening there that the people follow the Lord now and that I wanted to share because it's, I don't know the area where, where they are, but it, it's also in the, one of the flooded areas. And, and so they continually can continuously go into the areas around. And he is, he has a, as this man, he's from Germany here. He has a lot of supporters now and they are praying every day via Zoom for this. And they, he said in the beginning, he believed for, I think, 7,000 euro to give to 1,000 people or so. And now the Lord challenged him, or he had this on his heart to trust God for 70,000 euro um, uh, to support more families. And he said he already has 20,000. So the people are so involved from here, his friends and family and he has a huge network and they all are praying for Myanmar and also for, and they give money. And he said, it's so amazing. He never had this in his life. And he had a lot of things. He was in Delhi many years and he was in Greece, how I, how I said, working with Muslim people. And yeah, so, so I wanted to share this, that you are also encouraged that there are many things, maybe we don't know what are happening. 
<laughs> yeah, in the midst of the terrible, because, because it, he said the people are like ripe fruits. They have nothing anymore. And so their heart is ready to receive the Lord. And Praise God. Yeah. So, Christine, but, thank you so much for sharing, because that sort of encouragement is what is what yeah. we need. But yeah. thank you, Lord. They built it actually in this time a house for these young people where they have them, they live with them and they they share their life with them and they disciple them and so on. So it's really, I saw the pictures, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. We'd love to see the pictures if yeah. Maybe I can ask him to come on the next call. Also, I, I didn't I, I didn't realize that today is Myanmar watch, so I I was not asking him. <laughs> Yeah, that would be wonderful. Yeah. We we pray every Thursday, so um every Thursday, okay. Yeah. yeah, I can send you our link because we pray on a different link the rest of the days, that rest of the week. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. That's a big encouragement. Yeah. Um, we we keep declaring that he's doing far more than we understand. Amen. But, that's been one of our decrees. Mm -hmm. uh, occasionally, we get to hear a little bit of what's happening in the land. Mm -hmm. David, have you got anything else to, to report on? I have got some worship for us to go to for a few minutes. I've just been, uh, the issue of the rain is is not just Maasai. It's going to be uh, further abroad. And uh, the floods have caused enormous damage. I've had contact from one one pastor who's trying to outreach into the uh, into the areas that he has networks in, asking for for help, um, financial help, because we can't actually send people in at the moment. But um, um, so we're we're looking at what we could do for him. Um, but his name is. Uh, don't publish it. And he's a he's a wonderful man. Uh, he has enormous networks, particularly amongst Baptists uh, in in uh, Myanmar. And um, uh, he's trying to get food, medicine, um, clean water, all those kinds of things out into communities uh, through the Baptist Church. And um, uh, yeah, so just pray for him, and there's an, another pastor in in Yangon also doing the same, and so we are. Um, this will be uh, um, the window for disasters is usually very small, but the um, you know the earthquake stops and the the time time ticks, and then the world kind of moves its focus to the next disaster. Uh, but this particular one, the um, the after effects are going to be uh, enormous. Um, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm having a blank moment. Um, mosquito, mosquito populations are going to be breeding, breeding because of all the water on the ground. There'll be more malaria, there'll be more dinghy, um, all those kinds of things will be happening. The rebuilding programs, the, the mudslides, the loss of crops. Uh, this is going to have a huge effects going into months and possibly years. Um, so we need to be continually. But when the, when this focus moves out of the papers, as it were, um, we need to remain focused on this because this is going to be a um, a big one. The other thing I, I saw too, um, and I've I've sent sent a message of seeking clarification is that the uh, Thai government are now saying that they will give working status to um, um, here we go again mm. to um, uh, refugees who are coming across the border who, who are uh, um, unrecognized and it's called a pink card or it's being or it's being called a pink card now i need to get clarification on this because the the thai government several years ago was talking about using um 
Burmese refugees and uh, undocumented people as basically slaves in the um, in the economic miracle they're trying to to get going, and they would pay them a pittance of what they would pay a, a, a tire worker to go and you know bring in the rice and do all those labouring jobs. Uh, the fact that these guys can't work otherwise, I mean they're they're in they're in a position where they're up against the wall and they're um uh you know take the pittance or you don't get anything kind of thing. So I've I've sought clarification of that whether this is the same thing or whether it's a different um venture that they're trying they're they're proposing. But it's interesting that that's happened in the last you know, seven days or so. And I don't know what that means for the refugees in the camp, whether they will be permitted to have a pink card to go and work in the communities around them. It would be good if they could. They used yes. to be able to do it. <coughs> they used to slip over the barricades, didn't they? Yes. Well, the, what, when we were first going in there, you know, there was one particular village which had a church in it and all kinds of things, but it was actually evangelised by refugees from Malar Camp. And they had somehow got together and they had they had asked the question, God, why have you got us in this refugee camp for so long? And they, they came to the conclusion that God had put them there to, to clear the gospel. Okay. So they used to sneak out of the refugee camp and go to the, now there are Karen, who are Thai Karen, uh, who speak the same language or a similar language in villages close to the camp. And so they would go out to these villages and declare the gospel. And in, in this particular village, um, uh, the, the evangelists from the camp came in and there was a, there was a, a, a clash between the head man and the, um, um, uh, you know, the spirit guy. And the spirit guy was saying, look, you don't have, the witch doctor, he, he was saying, you don't have any right to be the, the head man because you don't have a son. So I'm taking over. So there's this big clash. And into the midst of this came the came the Karen refugee who who is preaching a powerful God. And uh, the the head man said, you know, is your God powerful enough to give me children? And he said, of course he is. Let's pray. Well, the head man ha has three sons. And when the first son was born, he said to the witch doctor, get out of here. We are now Christians. Now, he made his decision based on a power encounter. And the Anglican church came in behind and discipled them to faith. And that's why the Anglican Church was doing in that particular camp. And um, anyway, so that you you hear these stories about when the Karen are allowed out of the camp, it's not just to get food and and money and and that kind of stuff. God does open doors for them in the proclamation of the gospel to the non-Christians around them. Take us to Isaiah thirty-five. And I'm reading from the Passion Translation, from verse 3. Strengthen those who are discouraged. Energize those who feel defeated. Say to the anxious and fearful, be strong and never afraid. Look, here comes your God. He is breaking through to give you victory. He comes to avenge your enemies. With divine retribution, he comes to save you. And this is written for Israel. And every time we pray for Myanmar, the two almost become one. Because we're, we're praying for Israel, we're praying for Myanmar in the same situation or the similar situation. Blind eyes will open and deaf ears will hear, just as... David's just been testifying and also um, just as um, the other amazing testimony. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, Christine. Powerful testimony and 
expert and we're so delighted to hear about it. Blind eyes will open and deaf ears will hear. Then the lame will leap like playful deer and the tongue-tied will sing songs of triumph. And we're aware that these people in Myanmar are worshippers, oh God. They love to sing, they love to worship. So the water, gushing water springing up in the wilderness, Lord, this will be living water springing up and streams of living water flowing through the desert. The burning sand will leave that, that one. The lame will leap like playful deer and the tongue tied will sing songs of triumph. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, I just thank you that you do speak to us, Lord. Lord, we have been decreeing that you're doing far more than we understand or can see. We thank you for the testimonies that showing us that that, that is what's happening, Lord God. Lord, I do ask for your forgiveness for unbelief, Lord. I repent of unbelief, Lord. Especially in the sight of all of the difficulties, all of the problems. Bombers coming from the air, floods from underneath. Ethnic armies, Lord, that are not reconciled to one another. And a military that only want to wage war, only want power. Lord, we um, just ask for your forgiveness, Lord God. And I decree, Lord, that here comes your God, Myanmar. He is breaking through to give you victory. Blind eyes will open. And deaf ears will hear. He comes to avenge your enemies. And we will see that revival coming in this nation. Lord, we thank you that you're doing a great work amongst these people. We thank you that you don't have forgotten them. We thank you that they. Uh, that you have prepared them to receive eternal life, to receive you, Jesus, in the midst of all these terrible things, God. That you softened their hearts through all this hardship. And I, th I thank you for what I could hear in person from these men and saw the pictures, what you're doing. I will really praise your name about all these new believers which follow you now with the whole heart. I thank you for all the people which are praying and standing for Myanmar now. And I thank you for all the money you um, set free to support this nation and making the hearts for the people soft when they see the gifts they don't expect and that someone is taking care for them. And I thank you that your love will break through in this nation, that your love will make the hearts soft. And I thank you that love never fails, God. And yeah, we, we bless Myanmar, we bless this nation, we bless these people in the midst of all this horrific things, God, that they um, can receive you more and more of these precious people can turn to you. 
Thank you um, that you're doing a, a deep work. Thank you that you are the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper also for this nation. That you have uh, people in this people group which stand and worship you like Bahrain. I also want to bless all these people which live in this nation, which know you already for a long time, that they don't give up, that they don't uh, get discouraged, especially now when a new flood is coming. Lord, help them, strengthen them. Um, yeah, let them raise up like, with wings like eagles, day and night, again and again. And we ask you to send more missionaries to this nation. That's what, what that's what was this man asking for, to send workers in the harvest. We know it's not popular to go to this people, to this people group, to this nation. We uh, we know that um, the people are maybe afraid to go there, but we ask you to call people into this uh, into this place. Make them willing to leave everything behind them and to go. Because the harvest is ready. You said we should pray for workers and we that's what we are doing here together. Send workers into this place um, to receive the harvest and to disciple the people. Amen. And pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. I just recently was reading Psalm 22 in my German Bible and was so amazed. And I, I feel like it's just a word for people in Myanmar, for me personally as well. But um, where in Psalm 22, the beginning is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And um, it just runs through um, Christ on the cross. And um, I'm going to just read a tiny bit to you. The very last verse in my German Bible, I was so surprised um, in this certain Bible I have, it said um, that people will cry out, it is finished, it has been accomplished. And I was like, wait a second, this is Jesus' words at the beginning of the cross? I mean, in the middle when he cried this out, my God, my God. And at the end, he's he says, it is finished. And that's the last word in this psalm. And um, it's just a psalm of praise, even though it's a, a terrible. So I'm just going to read a tiny little bit. And I just pray, Lord, that this will, that looking upon you, Lord, will be a comfort to the people of Myanmar. Lord, that you would um, give them a heart of praise towards you. Lord, you are accomplishing good things, even though it's a terrible time. Lord, we call for, out for your comfort. So I'm just going to read a tiny bit from Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me? So far from my cries of anguish. My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In your, ancestor, in your ancestors put their trust. And you, our ancestors, put their trust. They trusted, and you delivered them. To you they cried out and were saved. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Yes, and Lord, we just um, cry out together today a word of trust in you. Lord, you will not put your people in Myanmar to shame. Lord, you are behind them who look to you. And I pray that you you would just raise your banner up there in Myanmar. In the midst of all this terrible suffering, in the midst of all the hunger, um, lack of houses, floods, and not knowing where to go, Lord, your will shall be done and the people will come to know you. And at the end of this time, um, it says here, um, all of the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, 
he has done it. And this he has done it in my German Bible, it was he has accomplished, he, it is finished. He accomplished it. And Lord, we we reach out to you and proclaim this promise. Lord, you have accomplished a great thing. You are accomplishing a great thing there in the Myanmar. And we hold tight to you and trust in you, Lord. We call out your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. And Yeshua, when you cried out, it is finished, or he has finished. You, the mighty God, has finished. Then you reconcile the world with God. You are the God of reconciliation. And we ask you for reconciliation in Myanmar, among the tribes, among the tribal armies. It's only possible through you that there is reconciliation, that they will come together and have peace with one another. But you are able to do it. And we call out to you that you are the one who will do it. We ask you for this miracle to bring these people from the different tribes together to reconcile and to have peace with one another. Father, for our future, for this nation that is better than they have ever seen, Father. Only you are able and we cry out to you to do this for this nation. Thank you for your victory at the cross, Yeshua. So it is possible because you made it possible. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Lord, in these days of all, we do we do say, we declare that you are an awesome God, Lord. We come before you, Lord, with open hearts, Lord, with, with, <coughs> with humble hearts, Lord, to bow before you and to, to bring the nation of Myanmar before you. We come, Lord, to... To, to thank you, Lord, that you are doing mighty and wondrous things in the nation. We, we are overawed, Lord, that you are using circumstances, that people are so open. And we thank you, Lord, that you are, that you are, <laughs> are speaking, Lord. You are working in people's lives. And Lord, we are wanting, we, we, we stand with you, Lord, with the, the wondrous works of, of your spirit. Lord, that you are flooding through the land, Lord, by your spirit, Lord, that you are, you are bringing healing, you are bringing restoration, you are bringing life and the life of the good news of Yeshua, the Mashiach. Oh, Lord God, Lord God, keep, oh Lord, move in your power and your might, in Yeshua's name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, we praise you, we give you all the glory, Lord. You are still on the throne. And Father God, you are a listening God and, a, and a, a God that is constantly watching and looking, Father. Your light is shining through no matter what we hear, the disasters, the hopelessness, Lord God, the hunger, the flooding, uh, disease, oh God, corruption that happens during these kind of uh, um, calamities, Father God. But your eyes are looking, Lord. 
your light is shining through and you you can pick out the people that are surrendered to you lord that seek you that look to you lord we thank you for this pastor who is uh, helping the desperate lord for with food and medicine and whatever he could water drink water and he's um, networking with the different uh, groups and churches that he knows father god we pray that he would be able to reach out to more and more uh, 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 churches lord that they would respond and they would come to lift his hand lord to give him help father god to touch the and reach and help the people father god no matter uh, what we hear in the midst of it here of these kind of uh, uh, miracles, Lord, how you raise up people uh, in this chaotic times who are helping, who are reaching out. So, Father God, we ask that you'll multiply uh, these kind of pastors, Lord. And uh, Father, we pray that you'll open the hearts of the people in Myanmar who can help because they're right there, Father. They'll be able to reach out and uh, they will know the situation much better than anyone else. So, Father, we pray that um, you would uh, protect this uh, pastor, um, give him wisdom, Lord, and uh, give him provision and protection and um, expand his ministry, Lord, that he be touch, able to touch more mm -hmm. and more and more people. And so we thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. And, Father, we just thank you that your light still shines in Myanmar. And one day, Amen. Lord, we will see redemption. So we thank you and we praise you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we pray. Amen. Amen. Justin, I wonder whether you would like to share about what Asia Harvest is doing. I think they're the group that sent in a whole lot of Bibles a few months ago across the border. Are you able to share? Yeah. Um... I have sub subscribed to them for a number of years. Um, I've had conversations with um, the leader of the ministry, Paul Hathaway, for some time, and it's, I'm not sure if you can sit, oh, wait a second. Let me, I've got, I've got a newsletter here. It's of an older woman who's had her face tattooed and now the reason for the tattooing, and I'll read the newsletter, it says that for centuries, girls from several Chin tribes in Western Myanmar had their faces tattooed at puberty in a bid to make them appear ugly so they would not be carried off by men from other tribes. Face tattoos were outlawed in the 1960s, so this dear lady is one of the last living examples from that bygone era. So it's what they're doing is in the same way that they did with um, a book called Operation China, which is a, a book that profiles all the people groups per region or per area of China, they're now doing the same with Myanmar. Really, it's to raise awareness. And so they've only just started to do this in the last few weeks. I'm not sure if um, anyone's heard of it, but um, let me pray into it. So Heavenly Father, when I think of Myanmar, I see... I just see a cloud of darkness over the nation. There's so much evil that's going on there. In particular, on my heart is all the people that are trafficked, whether it's for these um, places that run scam operations that are in Southeast Asia, or whether it's just all the war or all the wars that are going on there. But Lord. We thank you that you have provided a light, that you have provided a light to the people of Myanmar through your finished work on the cross, which has already been prayed for. And Lord, we thank you and praise you for your finished work on the cross. And we thank you 
that it's also for the people of Myanmar. Lord, I thank you that you've also done this for the people of Myanmar. And Lord, we thank you that you are providing openings that we hear about for people to hear your gospel of truth and mm -hmm. to and to bring it about or to bring that truth, your truth to the people of Myanmar whom you love so dearly and preciously that you gave your life for them. And Lord, I do pray for some of these other initiatives, such as this operation series to bring awareness of the plight of these people groups in, of Myanmar, many of which I haven't heard of, uh, uh, many people haven't heard of, but Lord, you know each and every one of them. You see each and every one of them and you long for each and every one of them to be counted as part of your family. Lord, we pray that we pray that as it says in your word, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of salvation. Lord, we pray for more workers to come into to come into every part of Myanmar to come to bring truth and bring hope to those people that have suffered, including, um, including these women who have had their faces tattooed, but also all these other things that have happened. Lord, bring workers in to share your light, your truth, to bring a light to that cloud of darkness that is hanging over Myanmar. In Jesus' name, amen. But yeah, so it's, you can see it there. So it's called Asia Harvest. And if I bring it up a bit more, so you can see there's a picture of a woman there. And if you look closely, you might be able to see that her face is covered in tattoos. We can only see if her nose. Can't see yeah. Just yeah, it's a whole yeah, it's difficult with the with the camera, but yeah, yeah her whole, her whole face is covered in tattoos. Thanks for sharing. That's a an encouragement. I think they are the group that sent a whole lot of Bibles across the border last year sometime yeah um, so they do all sorts of other work so yeah they do send bibles they've got a asia bible fund an asia workers fund ministry training living martyrs fund children's and persecution and relief fund so they do all sorts of different work throughout um, east and southeast asia lynn has put a link in for asia harvest in in chat yes. for someone who yes. wants to find out more. Thank you. Ian, did you want to pray? Thanks, Rose. Quickly. Father, we thank you that this strategic nation of yours between the great Hindu nation and the great Marxist nation, and we thank you for your prophetic purposes for me, me and Ma. Through such times of great trial, taking your gospel where others cannot go to a humble, beautiful and surrendered people by faith in Yeshua. Lord, you do remarkable things. Your ways are so much higher than ours and your methods. Lord, we just marvel at and we exalt your holy name. And we thank you for the privilege of praying into this group, dear Lord. And we thank you for those whose lives are committed to, to helping this nation and seeing you do your marvellous work. Thank you, Father, in Yeshua. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We've just got a few minutes left if somebody else would like to pray. Lord, I thank you that those Bibles went in a few months back when it wasn't the rainy season, when it wasn't hindered by that but and the lord i just thank you that you took those bibles to the people that really needed them lord god 
And Lord, there are probably still some waiting to be delivered throughout the nation. Lord, we just pray that your word will come into their hands, Lord God. And you are the living word, Lord, that you would reach out to these people. We thank you for the reports of their hearts being open. Lord, they do they have lost everything in, in life, their homes, their work. Their families have been um, dispersed throughout the nation. Lord, we know the, the issues. We know what's happening on the ground. But, Lord, we thank you that you are at work in this nation. Amen. You are the same God. Lord, you are all-powerful. Amen. We thank you for your glory resting upon this nation. Lord, we pray for protection for those who are reaching out to the people of Myanmar and wanting to help them. Lord, that you would provide what they need that they can continue on to live. And Lord, I, I really, I just want to continue to praise your name. Lord, we look and see darkness. We look to Jesus on the cross and saw death. But Lord, you are bringing in life. And Lord, we proclaim you are bringing in life through Myanmar. And we call out life for your people there. Lord, many do know you. Many do proclaim your name. And Lord, as they are being pressed down, Lord, may you turn this into a, a diamond, Lord, that will, will shine out to the nations all around as they being pressed out of Myanmar into the Thailand and yeah, as China comes in and tries to um to take over, Lord, we we call out your victory over the people of Myanmar that they might come to know you in a way um that just brings you so much glory, and we call out your triumph in this nation, even as we look and see darkness. Your light is brighter. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We've just got a few minutes, and I would like to play one of all Rain's songs. The first song that the Lord gave him, the Lord told him that he should be singing scripture. And the first one that he asked him to sing was Isaiah 12 in the New Living Translation. Now, I can't actually put up the the words, unless I put it up in um, in chat, I can do that. Um, that might just take a moment. Um, I did try and put that report that I wrote about the, what's going on with all of the crises in Myanmar, but they won't let you put files from your computer into chat anymore. So I'll put it again into um, Global Watch community um, signal group. But I think we can worship. Um, this is just an audio recording. We can worship this over Myanmar and also over Israel. Blessings, everybody. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, today, this evening, and blessings. Over to you, Alison. Shalom, everybody. You could unmute. Shalom. I have my Hello. blessings, too. Shalom, everyone. Shalom. Blessings. 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 Blessings.